there, it's Sandy Alnock with another In My Holy Week series, this one for Maundy Thursday, and surprisingly, is in Hebrews. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. And I'd never really heard this as a Holy Week meditation of any kind, but I was moved to put the Garden of Gethsemane on this page. You could, of course, put the garden on the page with the story itself. But this one really struck me because in the meditation, which you can get in the PDF in the doobly-doo and read it for yourself for today, they were talking about how, you know, looking back at Jesus' life, what was the moment when this prayer was answered? What was the moment when Jesus cried out? And his, his response was given because of his submission. And it explores the idea of Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew what was coming. He knew they were coming with pitchforks and torches down the road from Jerusalem to where he was in the garden. He knew what was coming. He knew the agony that was ahead. And he did ask for the cup to pass, if it's possible. He did ask that. The answer that was given to him was, to strengthen him for what was to come, not to release him and say, okay, fine, you don't want to do it, we won't do it. The answer was, I'll be with you. I will give you strength to get through it. And what occurred to me as I was really praying and meditating on that that particular writing was the number of times that I'm really okay with saying, I want God's will, when everything's going smashingly. When everything's just fine, yeah, totally cool, I want God's will. It's when it gets really hard that it's more challenging to pray this way and to have that reverent submission that is talked about in this particular verse. When somebody's coming at you with the pitchforks down the road and you see the fire and it's nighttime, it's dark, it's scary, and and life's not working out exactly right, can you, can I fully submit? Is it possible to really submit? And a lot of times I find that really challenging and I want to be more Christ-like. I want to learn from Jesus and his example. And this one in particular is a really hard pill to swallow. It was hard for him to swallow. It was not an easy thing for him either. But he is the perfect model for us in his perfect submission. And that's, that's just, that's a hard one that I'm going to be pondering for a while. Especially right now, as, you know, we've been asked by the authorities on earth who are over us to stay home and not worship together in church on Sunday for Easter. I'm, I have to admit, I'm a little bitter, <laughs> a little mad about this. but. You know, God's will might be right here and right now to teach us that we can worship him in spirit and truth in our own homes. Even me doing it by myself, me and my dogs and my church on my computer, that he's going to be there with us no matter where we're worshiping him, even on Easter. Just because it's, it's Resurrection Sunday doesn't mean that he's only in church, that he's only going to meet us there. Maybe that's what we're supposed to learn here. His will is not one that I'm privy to in real specifics that way. He hasn't told me why we're being separated, you know, other than we know that it's dangerous not to be. But but God is is really working on the church in ways that we've never been challenged. We've never been asked to stay apart in this kind of a way. I mean, I know in some places where the church is persecuted, they have, but in places like where I live, that's just not a normal part of life. And now we're getting a different taste of how things are right now. We're, we're getting a different sense of discipline. And can we continue to be together, be the church, but be the church in separate places and find other ways to join together? There's there's just so much that God is doing right now, and I, I don't understand it. I don't know where he's going with it, 
but I want to be obedient. I want even in the hard moments to have that reverent submission that Jesus had. I, I want my prayers to be heard because they align with God's will, not with my will, not with what Sandy wants, but what the Lord of heaven wants, because he is the only one who knows what I really need. So there is my little page with my nighttime scene of Gethsemane. I can't wait to see what you create today for Maundy Thursday. Please share it over in the Facebook group. And I will see you again tomorrow for Good Friday. God bless you.